London's bus fleet is changing fast, and this new double-decker bus could be one of the most important yet. This is the Enviro 400 EV, Alexander Dennis's next generation electric bus. Will this be the future of London's bus network, or just another experiment? So what makes this bus especially interesting is the story behind it. For years, Alexander Dennis and BYD partnered up to make some of the most prominent and iconic buses on the network. With Alexander Dennis providing the body, aka the build of the bus, and BYD providing the chassis, aka the tech of the bus. During their collaboration, they created over a thousand buses together for London alone. That's not including the various units they have made for other locations in the UK. However, this partnership came to an end in 2024 when they mysteriously parted ways, with the last London vehicle being delivered to Go Ahead London for the Route 262. Then, out of nowhere, BYD announced they're going to release their own standalone bus, the BYD BD11, and Alexander Dennis are going to release their own standalone bus, the Enviro 400 EVs, both using their own bus bodies and in house battery technology. We've already reviewed BYD's offering. Now it's time to review Alexander Dennis's. And what better place to start than the exterior of the bus? Now, one thing Alexander Dennis know how to do is build a good looking bus. It's a good mixture between sharp edges and smooth curves, and it looks really modern and it stands out compared to the competitors. And I think that's an important factor when designing a bus. Like it needs to stand out. You don't want a bus to blend in with the rest of the buses. There's only so many things you can change about a bus. So any opportunity to switch up and make it look a bit different, I applaud. But yes, going back to the exterior, Alexander Dennis really refined and evolved their design. I love how they retained and enhanced the vampire teeth looking area at the back of the bus where they housed the rear lights. And I love the new front design and I like how it kind of protrudes out a bit in comparison to the old vehicles. Another thing is the flat back of the bus. A lot of modern buses have been going for this ultra flat back look. You can see on the Electroliners and the BD11s. And yes, I know most buses tend to have quite a flat back anyways, but these recent additions seem to have really flat backs, like ultra flat backs. And I love it. And lastly, as with most modern buses, includes the electric wing mirrors and LED displays. One complaint I do have is that I would love if the London operators added a destination blind at the back of the bus as seen with Manchester's B network variants. I'm always for a back destination blind. More information means it's more helpful for passengers. Another complaint I have is the rear indicator lights. Even though they look very cool, I do have to say, I'm not sure how good they are for visibility purposes. Having them a bit bigger and brighter would be better, especially for scenarios where it's really foggy. All in all, I love the exterior of this bus, but let's see if the interior holds up as well as the exterior. Just to preface, the interior of the bus tends to vary depending on the operator, so I'll assess and compare the operator's interior choices. First, you agree to the driver's cabin, and then when you follow it round, there's a big boxy structure on the right-hand side. Usually, there would be two seats located here, but on this bus, unfortunately, they aren't. I'm assuming some extra batteries are held in this area. It is unfortunate that there are no seats here, but I expect as Alexander Dennis's battery technology advances, they will take up less space in the bus, meaning we could re-add those seats. This does illustrate the different levels bus manufacturers are at with their battery technology, as the buses that have used BYD's battery technology can include those seats. As we head further down, this bus has included grab poles in this front standing area, which I think is a really good addition. As when the bus is really packed, people tend to stand in this area and there aren't many things to grab hold of. So the addition of these grab poles reduces the chances of someone falling over due to them not previously having something to hold on to. As you head down, you've got two priority seats on your right, which appear to have adequate leg space, in addition to including armrests, which make the journey just a bit more comfortable for priority users followed by the stairs to lead you upstairs on your left, then the wheelchair area, with it including a buggy bell, wheelchair bell, and a regular bell. I'm loving the inclusion of buggy bells on buses. I'm not sure how their purpose is as significant as a wheelchair bell, but you know, it's a fun inclusion. Present in this area is the iBus screen, but we'll get onto that a bit later. Additionally, there are translucent glass dividers, one dividing the wheelchair area and the seats, and the other dividing the back door, and the seats. I'm quite a fan of this physical barrier and I feel like it properly segments this bus. Like you have the front priority area, then the back door, then you've got the wheelchair area, then you've got the back seats. You know, 
clear segmentation of the different areas on the bottom deck. I like. Heading to the back, you've got the two lower seats on either side, the two upper seats, and then seats at the back. Again, with the newer buses now, they've removed the middle seat for safety purposes. It means if the bus has to emergency stop, no one's going to go flying forward. And in its place, they've put a bell. Now we've walked through the bottom deck, it's time to discuss the iBus screens. So they've got one upstairs and they've got two located downstairs. Now the number of iBus displays isn't the problem, it's the location and the software used. So the two operators in London that use these buses is Stagecoach and Arriva. So they've both placed a rectangular display in the wheelchair area in the opposite direction of the seats. This is optimal for wheelchair users where previously they'd be facing the opposite direction of the iBus display. So this display and its location, very good, very impressed. However, the second display on the bottom deck is where these two operators differ. So a reverb located at the front on the left hand side where the two front seats usually are. It's a bigger screen than the other iBus display and displays other information such as the next few stops on the route. I think this location is really well thought out. It's located where pretty much everyone on the lower deck can see it. You know, it's a bit small and it's a bit far forward for the people right at the back, but it can be seen by pretty much everybody. Then we've got stagecoach's placement, which is honestly not great. Its placement means that people in the priority area, which arguably are the people that would need to use an iBoss display the most, have no access to a display. Additionally, people sitting on the right hand side of the bus, due to the position of the wheelchair accessible display, means they're not able to see that iBus display at all, unless they bend down quite a bit to get a proper glance at it. It's like great, they solved an issue by including a display here for the wheelchair users, but they created a problem by making the display unusable by people sitting on that side. In addition to not providing the technology for priority seat users, what I would advise is to do what Arriva did and add the display at the front of the bus, which means that it's accessible for the majority of people on the lower deck. And if you want to, on top of that, to make it even more accessible, make the wheelchair user display double-sided, which means it's a clearer and closer screen for the people sitting right at the back of the bus. This double display technology isn't new and it's been used on previous buses, such as the Mercedes e -Sitaro. Another thing about the displays that I wanted to cover quickly is the software used. So Reva for this bus have used the same software used on TUK and Go Ahead have used on their buses. The proportions work well, it's very informative and it's very clear. Whereas Stagecoach have opted for a different software which just isn't great at all. Like having text fit onto the screen properly is the bare minimum. And in 2025, this is just not acceptable. There were talks of iBus 2 coming out, so I imagine that will be introduced onto all the buses, which will include an overall software refresh. But still, for the time being, at least making sure the text fits onto display is the least that one can do. So as we head upstairs, we've got a beautifully well-lit staircase. And when you reach the top, you're greeted with such brightness. Throughout the top deck, there are huge windows that let in a lot of beautiful light. Especially of the window at the back of the bus and the one at the front, where it's kind of split into two. So you have the top panel and then the bottom panel and the iBus display is wedged in between. I've never seen this placement of an iBus display before on a bus and I really like it. But going back to the windows, this is another area where depending on the operator who buys these units is where we'll get different features. For the Arriva variant of this bus, you get not one, but two skylights. Whereas the stagecoach variants don't include any. And this really makes a big difference in the amount of light that enters the bus. The buses with the skylight feel much brighter and more welcoming, especially on a sunny day. When there are overhanging trees and the bus drives underneath it and you look up, it creates this incomparable feeling. I just love it. What would make it even better is if it had a glass staircase, as with the demonstrator variants, but sadly neither operator chose this option. Another thing I wish these buses included was alternative lighting, similar to the MCV BZLs and the BYD BD11s. Having alternative interior lighting really adds to the overall mood on the bus. But other than that, the upstairs is pretty similar to other new buses nowadays, with there being two seats at the front on the right hand side in front of the staircase, and all seats including headrest and USB type A and type C chargers. It also includes the seat handles instead of the poles, and that's pretty much it. But what are the seats actually like, comfortability wise? The seats on the Stagecoach and the Riva variants are both relatively comfortable. I find the Stagecoach ones to be a bit more firm than the Riva ones, but they're both comfortable. 
but I just slightly prefer the Arriva ones. Lastly, let's cover the acoustics. So yes, the bell noise is different depending on the operator. Stagecoach one is more familiar as it's used on pre-existing buses, being an iconic and loud bell noise. Whereas the one of the Arriva buses were quite quiet and not as distinctive. That can possibly be fixed by turning up the noise of the bell, but it seemed to be present on all Arriva Enviro 400 EVs that I traveled on. Fortunately, the door closing noise is the same on both and it sounds crisp, clean and lovely. I think it's my favourite bus closing noise where it goes dun, 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 crisp, amazing. So after spending some time on the Enviro 400 EV, I think it's a lovely bus. I think it has a really iconic design, very futuristic design. The sharp edges and smooth curves really give it a sense of character and individuality. You know, it stands out compared to the other electric buses on offer. It's jam packed with all the new technology and it's a really smooth ride. It's definitely a step in the right direction in regards to design and passenger comfort. But while I find the bus impressive and so do other enthusiasts, we can't ignore the numbers. Operators so far, at least in London, have been opting for the BD11 over the Enviro 400 EV. And that's because it is the cheaper bus out of the two. And in a business, if you're choosing between two items that pretty much provide the same outcome, you're going to choose the cheaper one. So unless the Enviro 400 EV can be reduced in price so it's more comparable to the BD11, I don't think it will become the future of London's bus network. What do you think of the Enviro 400 EV? Do you think it has the chance of becoming as popular as the BD11? Let me know what you think. Just want to take the second to appreciate my channel members and Patreons. Really appreciate you. Much love. Lastly, if you ever want to chat about buses or you've got some cool pictures you want to share and whatnot, join the Discord. It's in the description. It's worth it. Good, fun chats about buses, trains and all sorts on the Discord. Anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, Enviro 400 EV, it should have just been you and me driving into the sunset, feeling so glee, having a laugh whilst sipping some tea.